नमो बुद्धाय दिस अभिनव गुलेचा एंड आई वेलकम यू टू दिस चैनल दिस इज पार्ट थ्री ऑफ द बुद्धाज टीचिंग्स ऑन गिविंग राइट द अदर पार्ट वन एंड पार्ट टू द लिंक्स आर देयर इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन वॉट आई हैव डन इज दैट आई हैव ट्राई टू कंपाइल द बुद्धाज टीचिंग्स द वेरियस सूत्रस एंड ऑन द बुद्धाज टीचिंग्स एंड सो दिस इज द थर्ड पार्ट राइट द ऑल द सूत्रस विच आई हैव बीन एबल टू फाइंड they are there in the description the in links to the individual sutras so you can also go and check the individual sutras if you want to study them one to one right so continuing with the teachings now here buddha is saying uh, in one of the discourses i found buddha says that rain all over don't be like a rainless cloud so i'm just re uh, uh, reciting a specific extract from that particular discourse buddha says mendicants these three people are found in the world what three one like a rainless cloud one who rains locally and one who rains all over buddha says and how is the person like a rainless cloud it's when some person doesn't give to anyone at all right person doesn't give to anyone at all whether ascetics or brahmins paupers vagrants nomads or beggars such things as food drink clothing vehicles garlands perfumes makeup bed housing lighting that's how the person is like a rainless cloud right person doesn't give to anyone and how the person reigns locally it's when some some person gives to some but not others whether ascetics and brahmins paupers vagrants that means either he may give only to ascetics or he may only give to beggars and not to others right that's how a person reigns locally and how does a person reign all over it's when some person gives to everyone whether ascetics brahmins paupers that means everyone and anyone who comes in his way he gives that's how a person reigns all over there are three people found in the world so here buddha is actually trying to say that we should not be discriminative in our givings right definitely in one of the earlier discourses buddha says that the merit that you get from the giving differs with respect to the to, to whom the gift is given for example the gift to an enlightened sage or to arhant or a buddha the merit for that far surpasses the merit to a ordinary person right so combined understanding of both what i will get is that buddha never said that give only to them and not to others buddha says rain all over so when it rains rain doesn't happen that you know rain doesn't say that i will only happen in this area i will not happen in this area the rain happens to i will only um, rain on a particular persons of a particular caste or a particular religion and i will not rain on others right or i will only rain on specific types of houses and not to others no rain when it rains it rains everywhere so we have to be like like that cloud that when that cloud gives rain it has to sweep everyone so the important thing here is that we should not discriminate between you know any particular class of persons while giving just give with whole hearted uh, thing whole hearted intention to anyone who crosses our path even the little most that we can give we should give without discrimination at the same time uh we should desist from giving to immoral people this is just my understanding i don't know exactly how what buddha said on this particular thing donating to a immoral but an immoral person you know we should just in ensure that you know that person doesn't misuse the money for doing immoral acts so even in terms of giving or in times of support we should desist from supporting immoral people who we know are breaking the precepts they kill they steal they perform sexual in misconduct they drink right so we should not you know apart from that people who are immoral whoever comes to us and whoever we find across in our journey we should not be discriminating be like a rainless cloud be like a be, no so don't be like a rainless cloud just rain all over and keep giving okay then this is a very important thing uh, don't rest with the giving also do meditation so buddha said to the householders so what happens is the lay people the householders they donate to the uh, ascetics or the the monks because they 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 the monks they, they cannot do any work they have to just live on arms and then they spread the teachings of the buddha so buddha said is that to the lay monk uh, to the lay people buddha said that don't only rest that okay my i have done my giving and my job is done see understand one thing buddha is was very clear on this particular point of the importance of mental development 
right, which is there in the noble eightfold path. So three elements are there in the noble eightfold path. One is the uh, morality, that means right conduct, good conduct. Second is mental development, that is mind becoming concentrated and strong. Third is wisdom. What will free us is the wisdom. For getting the wisdom, our mind should be concentrated. For making our mind concentrated, morality helps. All three go hand in hand, but mental development is also a fundamental pillar in our practice. So a lot of people, what they do is that they follow Buddha's teachings, but they do not meditate. That is, in my view, not the right approach. Buddha had placed importance on meditation. So Buddha says in this particular, I am just taking an extract, Buddha says, Householders, you have supplied the mendicant Sangha with robes, arms, food, lodgings and medicines and supplies for the sick. But you should not be content with just this much. So you should train like this. How can we, from time to time, enter and dwell in the rapture of seclusion? That's how you should train. So, enter and dwell in the rapture of seclusion is seclude themselves, make the mind one-pointed through the practice of meditation. So, Buddha is asking householders to keep on thinking that apart from this, how can we enter that meditative space? Because in that meditative sp space, we can for ourselves experience directly the fact that everything is impermanent, everything is non-self, everything is suffering, the three marks of existence. And then we can liberate. And for doing that, we can practice Vipassana meditation, which is insight meditation. I have made a separate video on the insight meditation in the tradition of Mahasi Sadao. And you can check that and you can start doing insight meditation from today. Very soon I will try to, you know, uh, have some kind of a daily Sangha. Uh, we, we can all come together on Zoom and uh, do our meditation practice. When that happens, that will happen. But do start your meditation practice from today. Okay, uh, then there is this story about uh, uh, Velama. Uh, what is the greatest dana, right? The story. So one is that definitely Buddha says that the gift of teaching surpasses all other gifts. So here in the story of Velama, this is a long discourse. We can maybe I can make a separate video on this. But here Buddha says is that uh, so th there was this thing about you know the person gifted so many horses and everything and Buddha says it would be more fruitful to go to the refuge of the Buddha, the teaching and the Sangha that means the triple gem with a confident heart than to build a dwelling for the Sangha then Buddha says it would be more fruitful to undertake the training rules that means the five precepts than even the triple gem then Buddha said it would be more fruitful to develop a heart of love even as long as it takes to pull a cow's udder that means very quickly you can just do that rather than the precepts. Then Buddha said, it would be even more fruitful to develop the perception of impermanence, even for as long as a finger snap, right? Even as long, than to do all these things, including the development of heart of love, for as long as it takes to pull a cow's udder. So here what Buddha is saying, that development of the perception of impermanence, that everything is changing, right? Even if you can, it just takes like this, finger snap for us to develop that perception and hold that perception in us that everything around us is changing that is like even better than doing all these charities and everything and right so one is the charities and then Buddha says is the training of our mind right then developing the heart of love and even better is the development of this perception of impermanence right so through the practice of Vipassana the inside meditation we can get develop this particular perception in us. Reasons to give. Okay. So Buddha says, the mendicants, there are eight grounds of giving. What eight? Merson might give, give a gift out of favoritism or hostility or stupidity or cowardice. That is the one reason. Then, person can give thinking that giving was practiced by my father and my father's father. It would not be right for me to abandon this family tradition. Or they may give thinking, after I have given this gift, when my body breaks up after death, I will be reborn in a good place, a heavenly realm. Or they give thinking, what while giving this gift, my mind will become clear and may I become happy and joyful. Or they give gift, gift thinking, this is an adornment and requisite for the mind. They are the eight grounds of giving. 
So Buddha is talking about the various grounds, the various reasons that people give. Right? There is not that one reason is better or another reason is better. But Buddha simply states the various. But the yes, the be better thing is that to give giving as a part of the spiritual practice. That my karmas get clear, I accumulate merit by this particular pro process. Because we only carry our, Buddha, Buddha's teaching was that we only carry our karmas with us in our future lives. So why not do the better karmas? So it's like a wholesome action. A wholesome action creates a wholesome karma, which determines our state of birth in the next lifetime. Right? So these are the various grounds of giving and we, have, we can decide what is our reason for giving. Right? Because, see, somewhere I also studied this thing that rebirth on account of giving. I think in the book by Bhikkhu Bodhi, in the Buddha's words. So some people who they think that they should achieve a particular heavenly realm, on doing the giving, they may, if they are morally pure, they will go in that realm. But that realm is also impermanent. There also, you know, the person will be there and then he has to come back to the lower realms. Right? So what our task is, what I feel is our primary task is living a pure life, a life of the five precepts, doing our meditation, which is the inside meditation, and get develop vipassana, develop the insight into the nature of things. Everything is impermanent. There is no I. And there is all suffering. That is what we have to do. That is we have to cultivate. Right? Okay, five gifts of a true person. Five gifts of a true person. So, Buddha here says there are five gifts of a true person. What five? They give out, give out of faith. They give, a, they give out of faith first. They give a gift. So, the five, I mean, uh, prerequisites of gifting. That would be the right kind of heading. So, gift out of faith. Right? They will gift carefully. They will give a gift carefully. Right? They will not give a gift carelessly. Third, they give the gift at the right time. So, remember about the timely gifts that we discussed in, I think, part 2. They give a gift with no strings attached. No expectations. They give the gift without hurting themselves or others. There is no harm that is caused to any person in this process of gifting. That are the five true gifts. Five gifts of a true person. So, Buddha further says is, Having given a gift out of faith, in whatever place the result of the gift manifests, they become rich, affluent and wealthy and they are attractive, good-looking, lovely and of surpassing beauty. Right? Having gift a gift, given a gift carefully, in whatever place the, the result of that gift manifests, they become rich, affluent, wealthy and their children, wives, bond servants, employees and workers want to listen. They actively listen. Because they have give the, given the gift carefully, they have people around them who listen, who try to understand them. Then Buddha says, having given a gift at the right time, in whatever place, the result of the, that gift. So, the gift that we give, somewhere it manifests. Right? Today, tomorrow, next life, whichever life it manifests, then it will manifest in that particular way. So, Buddha says, having given a gift at the right time, in whatever place, the result of that gift manifests. They become rich, affluent and wealthy. And when the time is right, they get all that they need. That means, when they need some timely help or assistance, they will get. Fourth, Buddha says, having given a gift with no strings attached, in whatever place the result of that gift manifests, they become rich, affluent and wealthy and their mind tends to enjoy the five refined kinds of sensual stimulations. Having given a gift without hurting themselves or others, in whatever place the results of that gift manifests, they become rich, affluent and wealthy and no damage comes to their property. Because they have not hurt anyone by giving that gift. No damage comes to their property from anywhere. Whether fire, flood, rulers, bandits or unloved hears. Right? So that is how the results of the gift manifest with respect to the, the way in which the gift has been made. So we give a gift. We also have to keep in mind the way that we are giving the gift. We give the gift with respect. So when the results of that gift gift manifest, we will get respect from the other people. Okay. Next. Next and it's the last one. Mutual support. So here Buddha is saying, see there is this, Buddha is saying about this 
mutual support between the lay community and the monk community so what the lay community does is that what the monk community does they spread the dhamma teachings to the lay community right and this is where somewhere the i think that that gap has become why buddhism declined over over the centuries or over the period is because that kind of a push that has to have ha, that has to be from the monk community to the lay people on spreading the teachings of dhamma somewhere that you know that had kind of diluted and that is what i experienced when i visited sarnath i captured all the learnings of my sarnath visit in another videos uh my sarnath visit part 1 part 2 so what happens is the dhamma the 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 sangha community monk community they give the teachings of the dhamma to the lay people and lay people in return they give the food lodgings they take care of the arms and everything of the of the monk community this is the mutual support right so buddha says mendicants brahmins and householders are very helpful to you mendicants brahmins and householders are very helpful as they provide you with robes arms food lodgings and medicines and supplies for the sick and you are very helpful to the brahmins and householders as you teach them the dhamma that's good in the beginning good in the end and good good in the end meaningful and well phrased as you reveal a spiritual practice that's entirely full and pure that is how this spiritual path is lived in mutual dependence in order to cross over the flood so mutually monks and the lay people depend on each other they both are stuck in this ocean of samsara so the the monks spread the dhamma teachings to the lay people they gain merit by doing that the lay people gives the gives the donations to the uh, Uh, the the monk, monks so that they can spread the dharma so so the lay people get the merit out of that and this is how both the lay people and the monks they come out of this ocean of samsara the buddha says lived in mutual dependence in order to cross over the flood and make a complete end of suffering so this is how the structure happens what buddha has made a very beautiful structure of mutual dependence between lay people and the monk community right so this completes my uh, three part series on the buddha's teachings on giving i hope they were helpful in some way to someone do share your thoughts comments your reflections on these teachings how these teachings can help you give in a better way and in alignment with what buddha taught and uh, uh, i hope the video was useful do share your thoughts and comments thank you for watching these videos namo buddhaye namo buddhaye